the Ink and Paint Club podcast is intended for mature audiences only. So don't tell your parents! Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to the Ink and Paint Club podcast, your weekly home for animation reviews and discussions. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ink and Paint Club podcast here on the Ink and Paint Club channel. Uh, I am your host, JD, as usual, and uh, with me, returning from our other Digimon reviews, I've got Jeanette here with me tonight. Hi guys. Hey. Um, yeah, we had <laughs> we had a bit of a trouble finding some people, but thankfully Jeanette was available to help us out tonight, and you've been on most of our reviews, so it was good to bring you back for this. Yeah, I have no life, what can I say? <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Um, so I think the only review of these, uh, Digimon movies you haven't been on is the last one, right? I was on the last one. I think it was the, last one was the fourth one. This was the fifth one. I wasn't on the third one. Oh, okay. That's right. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Good. Okay. I, I have trouble remembering things, but, um, anyway. You, it's, so, not, it's like you do a lot of podcasts or something. I know, right? It's like I do one every week. I can't be expected to keep track of all of them. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, as is tradition on this channel, because I make it to be anyway, uh, a new Digimon Adventure Try movie has come out, and we're going to talk about it. And um, I don't know about you, Jeanette. I <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> like, I have no idea what's happening anymore. That's, that's probably the, yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. Um yeah, I, I, I finished watching this new movie, and I'm like, I honestly had to say to myself, am I enjoying these anymore? Because, <laughs> like, the plot is getting so convoluted that I don't know what's going on anymore. And it's kind of a problem because there's how many months between each one? At least six months, if not more. So I don't even remember who any of them are. I don't remember what the different players are. I like yeah. the scene where they're like, who are we fighting? I'm like, yes, who are we fighting? I just don't know. Right. Like, they kept bringing up the uh, the homeostasis and the whoever the other guy is. Um, Yggdrasil. Yeah, y- y- yeah, Yggdrasil or something. And I like, was like, I had to rack my brain for a few minutes. Like, what was that about? And I'm still not entirely sure I remember. Like, I think homeostasis is, like, the good force in the digital world, and Yggdrasil's the bad force, I'm guessing, but who knows. Um, but... Well, homeostasis is, like, the one that wants to keep harmony. I have no idea what Yggdrasil is. Chaos, Yggdrasil is I just think. another dude. It's, it's Final Fantasy bullshit. One wants harmony, one wants chaos. Yeah. Throw in some crystals, and you got a Final Fantasy adventure. Um... But basically, this movie picks up right where the last one left off, where Meikuman is basically flipped the fuck out again, uh, has caused a bunch of portals in the digital world so all the Digimon can run rampant in the real world now, and uh, most of this movie is spent telling ghost stories in a school. <laughs> I actually like the ghost stories part a lot better than the actual stories part, because at least the ghost <laughs> stories part, I knew what was going on. Right. And like... So the so I guess we can talk about the ghost stories a bit. Uh, so basically, they come back from the digital world, from the real world, and uh, uh, the the basically the the main populace of the world is now now assumes the Digimon are bad because they're attacking and blowing up shit. Uh, but when the Digi Destin come back, they've got their partners on them, and they're almost arrested by well, they are arrested by the cops because of it. Um, and so their teacher guy, whose name constantly escapes me. Um, teacher guy. Yeah, teacher guy. Um, who got a little snippet of backstory in this, but we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, he basically takes all the kids and are like, we can't go home. You guys can't go home because there's like media and people swarming your houses because they know who you are. Uh, With so a we're gonna really teach- lazy explanation. They're just like, oh, it just got leaked or something. Yeah, it's like we they it's like the main pe- mainstream media knows who you guys are now. So we're going to take you to the school because it's summer and nobody's there. And yeah, they basically just spend like a good 20 minutes in this movie telling ghost stories instead of, you know, plot. Mm-hmm. Um 
But I, I don't know about you. Like, I don't. I think I might have said this on one of the other reviews. I don't mind these little excursions from the plot. But the only reason I do mind them is because they're so, like, there's a limited amount of episodes. I want them to spend it progressing the plot forward rather than just spending it on these slice-of-life moments. Uh, I just hate the plot so much. I just, like, I would much rather have slice-of-life moments than just watch the Digimon be cute and Padmon be a potato. (laughs) He's a potato. He is a potato and I love it. Yeah. I mean, I like the the ghost stories part because it's like they all, um you know sit around telling stories and stuff i like they kind of made it so matt has uh he doesn't like scary stories and he was the one kind of being a big wuss about it <laughs> i i <laughs> i think i even put it up as the uh the image for the podcast of just like everyone sneering at matt in the corner <laughs> that's a good image like every time the girls would just like they just cut they cut to all the girls like like whispering to each other it's like i just die laughing at that yeah <laughs> um but I think, and I'm pretty sure we've said this on every review so far, this movie is bogged down by the Mary Sue character. Oh <laughs> my gosh, I am so pissed about that. Like, God, um, I, hate I want so a much. new Digimon adventure with the Digi Destin, and instead all it does is focus on her and her Digimon. And She's apparently so... she, she gets mad too, apparently. Like, Ty just never wins. I know, and like, uh, yeah, I mean, she is... By definition, a Mary Sue character, she she is a new character introduced to a pre-established group of people. Everything is made about her, and everyone is concerned about her, and, like, every problem is about her now. And it's like, I don't, I didn't want to watch a Digimon uh, revival with all the characters that I'm familiar with and have 90% of the time spent on this girl that I don't care about. <laughs> Yeah, I feel pretty much spends her time being like whining about her problems. Yeah, I feel the exact same way. It's just like I I was really on board with like, yeah, we're gonna do a Digimon revival and then I'm just like, this is just like some fan fiction some sixth grader would have written. This Right. With all the and, convolution and all the Mary and the Mary Sue and everything. I mean I mean, now that I'm kinda of thinking about it, it's like you could kind of make the argument that uh Willis from that one third of the Digimon movie was kind of the same sense in the sense that, you know, his Digimon is a, is the source of all the problems, but he at least had the decency to be relegated to one movie. Yeah. <laughs> Not an entire season. Not like, isn't the next one the last one? Yeah, we got one movie left. So we've got another basically four episodes of a season left. And I don't that's know. It. I don't know if I'm terrified or I'm just glad it's going to be over in six months. See, that's the thing. I I am wrestling with my feelings here in the sense that I don't want it to be over because it's new Digimon content and it's, you know, one of my favorite animes from a kid and I'm I'm glad that it has come back. I'm just not glad the way it keeps every uh movie keeps getting progressively I wouldn't say worse. Um I'll use the argument I made last week um uh, with the Lego Ninjago movie is that I'm just, my enjoyment of them is a little less than the one before it. (laughs) Yeah, I would agree. And I'm at the point where I'm really not looking forward to them anymore. It's just like, uh, I guess I'll watch it for the podcast. Yeah. I don't think I would. uh, Otherwise I don't think I'd be watching them until they were all out. I could just binge it and they were over. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. (laughs) And then I'd be like, I can get, that was very disappointing. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I kind of don't feel like much happened in this one. Um, they came back. They told the ghost stories things. They had a fight with uh, Makumon and uh, Hackmon. Finally, has something to do. Um, but that's about it. Oh yeah. By the way, spoiler alert. I think Ty's dead. I think so too. I was like, holy shit. That's I mean, just he's a kick not in the nuts. I mean, he's not dead because he's the main character and he can't die. He'll probably just pop up at the last second in the next movie. But that also makes me sad that he's going to be probably gone most of the next movie. Yeah. Like, he's too important that you can't believe he's really dead. Like, maybe they would do that because Digimon can tend to be a little darker Mm -hmm. than other shows. But it's... I don't know. I'll just see what they do in the last episode. Yeah. Um... I like so, yeah, how. That... Go ahead. Go ahead. 
I like how Matt's like, guys, Ty's dead. Don't cry about it. Stand up. We're getting okay. on with our lives. That was probably my biggest problem with this entire movie. More than May, like the entirety of May's bullshit. My biggest problem with this movie is that they don't grieve at all or seem really that bothered that Ty's dead. Like he dies and like Kari kind of goes, does her dark thing. And there's a whole thing we get on in a minute about that. Uh, but yeah, they have they have like a split second like, oh shit, he's dead. And then Matt's like, fuck it, we got other things to do, let's go. And it's like, give him a second, god damn. I, I mean, this horrific monstrosity just came out of the sky. Maybe he's just not on the forefront of their mind right now. I, I guess, but it's like, you're, like your friend, your leader for like the last 15 years is dead. <laughs> yeah. Or you think he's dead? At and least you'd want to take two seconds to, like, grieve about that. Well, as Matt said, it's what he wanted. I guess. But, uh, I don't know. It rubbed me the wrong way that they just kind of glossed over the fact that, oh, he's he might be dead. Yeah. Um, But kind of in that similar scene. So, like, towards the end of the movie, uh, Hackmon digivolves into this weirdo thing where I can't keep track of his anatomy. Uh, and him and Omnimon and Meikumon's weird lion robot form now. Um, and Alphamon comes back, I guess. Um, that, that was the like, one cool part. It's when they're all digivolving and it's just a split screen of them all I did the, digivolving. I, I was actually kind of proud of them that they did it that way instead of having to go through every individual <laughs> one. It's like, good, you saved you saved a good two minutes on this to get to get this thing moving. So good for you. Um, but yeah, so that, that, I mean, that final fight scene where they're like, uh, they're in the streets, uh, fighting and then they go through a portal and they go back to the digital world and start fighting. That whole fight between the four of them is really cool. And I like it how it's like, um, so I guess homeostasis, that force or whatever sent Jessmon to kill Meikumon because it's like, they're tired of the Digidest not getting shit done. Um, so, like, we're gonna just do it ourselves and just stay out of the way. I mean, um, the Digi Justin has better things to do, like, tell ghost stories. I mean, right. Um, but yeah, they, they basically, they're trying, well, I, I think it was because they were kind of at the consensus, and again, this is a problem with May, is May is whining about everything, and they're like, oh, we can't kill her partner, that, that's a part of her, and they're, they're linked and stuff, so that we can't kill them, we have to try to save Meikuma, and I was like, guys... I think she's beyond saving at this point. Yeah, I was actually kind of disturbed by the whole arguments. Everyone's like, you can't kill, you can't kill this Digimon, blah, blah, blah. I was like, this is, doesn't make any rational sense. And it just feels really uncomfortable. It is. And it's like, guys, you've had five movies of this cat freaking out and ki- and just destroying shit. I think it's like, it's time to put this thing down. And they kind of come to a consensus after a while, uh, like, way past the point where they should have, where May's like, yeah, okay, I I see it now, you need to kill her. And Ty's like, alright, let's do it. And then Matt's being a dick, and like, nope, we can't do that, how could you do that to her? And like, half the team is like, yes, let's kill it, and the other half's like, no, don't, and it's like, guys... (laughs) <laughs> just get get with it. Yeah, the one thing is the storytelling in this is just a mess. You don't really see the series of events where they come from one conclusion to another. They just say shit to say shit. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, things just kind of happen, and you kind of just expect it to roll with it. Um, and honestly, uh, my wife put this into words pretty well. There is a lot of stuff that if you're a fan of Digimon, you kind of just accept, and it, like you you understand because you have some kind of background knowledge but if you're someone like her who literally has never watched anything but these movies you have would have no idea what's going on i mean i watched a fair amount of digimon i still have no idea what's going on (laughs) like i think for an example um there's a plot point in this where they finally kind of explain why meikumon is this giant evil dick bag and it's because she has a shard of Apoclemon in it, and Apoclemon is like the final bad guy from the first season, and I, yeah. I, I got a, I got a kick out of that. My wife had no idea what that was, um, and like honestly, unless you have some kind of like extensive knowledge far back, that like that's a pretty big plot point right there, and like I don't imagine anyone 
would know, know what's going on. And like a lot of the, like you're saying, a lot of things that they just kind of hop to the next thing. Uh, most fans would be like, okay, that's fine. Just roll with it. But anyone else is going to be really confused. Um, yeah. Also, I also I've noticed, and it's more prominent in this one. There's a lot of Japanese politics in this, and I don't know how I feel about it. Well, I know about <laughs> just as much about Japanese politics as I do the, the plot in the show, so it went way over my head. Right. It's like like the scene where the uh, the teacher guy and I guess May's dad he shows up, uh, I guess, and he they're all talking with Hackbon, and they're like like talking about governmental procedures and stuff and i'm like okay i mean i watched shin godzilla and there's a lot of that in in there so i kind of understood what they were talking about but like what person is going to understand all of this not me oh god i was Um, wondering also if you notice the animation in this is really bad it's i i and I, i think i've noticed it in the other ones unless it's a fight scene the animation is really simple. Um, there's not too much movement. It's a lot of, you know, standard anime mouth flaps. A lot, all the budget goes towards the fight scenes, which it should. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of agree. The The animation kind of cuts corners every, every now and then. Yeah, that's kind of jarring because almost everything is like, they don't animate something unless they absolutely have to. Otherwise, it's just still after still after still. <laughs> and then, like, in the beginning of it, they were reusing models, and I was like, that's wonderful. I did. I saw something on Tumblr a while back, uh, a couple months ago, and it's like, watch Digimon try, and anytime any of the characters are talking, look at the Digimon instead and just watch their horrified blank expressions. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was doing. Because they're all doing. just staring off into space doing nothing. <laughs> Yeah, and you'd expect in a movie, you know, to be a lot of background animation, things moving. Nope, Mm -hmm. just the bare minimum. Yeah, and I mean, even in when they're in the digital world, it's like, it's it's background. There's no, like, you don't see a whole lot of extra characters showing up. Um, I will say, there was a nice little nostalgia moment when they're running through the digital world and they end up in the same spot they started in. At the Mm -hmm. beginning of the of the of the series, and I was like, "Oh, that's a nice little that's a nice little throwback." Um, But yeah, I I I I agree with you. The animation's kind of like a pretty hit and miss. Yeah, like in the fight scenes, it's great, and you're like, "Yeah," yeah. but everything else is not good. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, the fight scenes are really well choreographed. You feel every hit that they throw, so it's like that. That's that's obviously where all the the money went. Yeah. Um. So, oh, speak kind of speaking of fight scenes, it's kind of tangentially related. Um, so, for the poster for this movie, they were basically advertising, like, uh, Meikuman's new evolution, and Gatamon was going to finally get her final, but it was, like, an evil corrupted version. Yep. You see that evil corrupted version for all of two seconds. <laughs> yeah, and then it fuses into this. Actually, I don't even think thought that much about the corrupted um angel woman or cat thing or whatever Mm -hmm. because this horrifying they just merge into this horrifying thing and i'm like this is disturbing it's like this weird like it looked like something out of like del toro's pan's labyrinth or something yeah like Uh, it was basically designed to make you as uncomfortable as possible oh god it's so gross it's like a weird squid face or whatever it's disgusting and then um, there's those twists and turns. That's what really uh, got me was, I don't know why, but just the way it overlapped and twisted and turned. I just, oh, yeah. Eh. I'm, I'm with you there. That thing, that thing grossed me out. Um, yeah. And then the movie just kind of ends with that thing going to the real world and like it's going to start murdering everybody. See, what I didn't get is why did Godamon randomly did evolve into this corrupted mega and then fuse with that? Like there's no well, explanation or anything. I like... I, I think this kind of goes back to, and honestly, I don't know if this is what I'm saying is even right. Um, the entire series, Kari has like had some weird emotional problems and has like a weird connection to the digital world. So like there's that scene where she starts like speak, having like someone speak through her. Yeah, the homostatus. Uh, right. That's happened like twice before, at least. Uh, so it, it, it's not like a, just a random thing that started happening. Like she's had like these weird things. And there was that whole bit in um, 
into the second season where she goes into the dark ocean and like almost like succumbs to darkness some weird kingdom hearts bullshit Mm -hmm. um but so kari like being succumbed to darkness like to dark powers and that infecting her partner isn't that surprising of a thing to happen i mean that's happened to agumon before when skull greymon was a thing Um, i remember that yeah so like the whole dark powers infecting the partner digimon isn't really that surprising but just the whole the poster really touted as this being a big thing and it literally shows up for two seconds before merging with uh the the cat and uh becoming this horrible monstrosity <laughs> it just kind of floats over to meikumon and just that's all yeah it does yeah, and it that and that you're just like okay, cool, that's a thing, um, yeah, and like, it, it it's almost really random because, only it's like in the last twenty minutes of this movie, this, the movie decided, oh, we're gonna make Kari a plot point. She does like almost everything. She hasn't done a single thing up until this point in the entire series so far. At least I don't remember her being really that important. Not really. If if it's not that new Digi Destin character, they're not really important. Yeah, and I, again, I okay. So another thing I want to talk about, and this is really my own hangups. I really hate, and if this happens to be the case, I'm gonna be really upset. I really hate that they're hinting at like Ty being involved with her. Like they spend a lot of time together in this movie, and it kind of bugs me. It's been, they've been hinting at their relationship, like, all through the series, and it's just, like, doesn't make any sense. It's total Mary Sue, as you've said it, before. Yeah, it's it's a Mary Sue, because, like, this new character is going to come in and basically start a relationship with the main character. And it's like, yeah, that's, like, almost 100% definition of a Mary Sue character. Like, maybe um, it's the serious way of trying to soothe the wound that Sora dated Matt and not Ty. But that's not the way to do it. <laughs> that makes it worse in my mind. It does, actually. <laughs> I'd rather him not end up with anybody than her. <laughs> and then there was, like, a bit where um, Matt grabs May and they're running around and like, Good, Matt, you can have her. I don't <laughs> care about you guys. <laughs> You guys could, you guys, as long as you fix the ending of the second season and put Ty and Sora together, I'm fine. Um, well, Ty can't be with Sora if Ty's dead. Sure. No. You know what? He died. He's going to come back to life and Sora's going to be so relieved that he's not dead anymore and just fling herself on him. That's the lie I'm telling myself now. (laughs) It's not going to happen. It's going to be the Mary Sue (laughs) character that does that. Oh, God, it is. Ugh. See, like, I, I, I don't want to shit on this movie as much as I am because I, I'm, I'm still like struggling internally because it's like I like this movie because it's a new Digimon movie and there are bits and pieces of it that I like, but on the whole, it's not good. <laughs> no, it's not good. It, it really isn't. It's like it's, it's taking so many things from the old show and just either blatantly ignoring them or just you know, kind of shitting on them a bit. Like, this is the type of movies that years from now, when they're all released, Nostalgia Credit will go back and be like, make fun of. <laughs> they're just that hammy and that dumb. Yeah. Um, I've only seen the first one in English. Um, and I know they're, I think they're dubbing them all in English now uh, and just putting them out on Blu-ray. So I'd be interested to watch this one more in English because I'm wondering if, just by virtue of it being a Japanese dub, maybe with an English dub, maybe they can uh, clean some of the dialogue up so it like makes more sense to an American audience. Maybe then this movie will get a little better. I don't know. I was um, actually thinking the same thing. I was wondering, is my problem just that I'm not familiar with the Japanese Digimon terms? And if I watched it in an English dub, I'd understand it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with a lot of the terms, it's just kind of their way of storytelling where it's a little slower paced and there's a lot of convoluted stuff. So I'm wondering if maybe like an English dub would able to be able to clean up the dialogue a little bit mm-hmm. uh, to make it make a little more sense, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I am not upset that I watched this. It makes me 
feel hopeful that maybe they'll finish this on a uh, a good um, a good note, I guess. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if they finish it on a good note, then I'll be like, yeah, that was worth it. It may right. have been a bumpy ride, but that was worth it. Yeah. And at least I do appreciate the series for bringing back the Digimon characters and I get to see the Digimon on the screen. I'm like, they're so cute. I love mm-hmm. the Digimon. Yeah. And, th- and that's the thing. Like, I'm I, I, I'm, I'm glad the series exists despite its flaws because it's like I as a kid, I grew up with these characters. I grew attached to these characters and the fact that the company whoever owns i think bandai owns digimon uh brought them back for base for nostalgia purposes for you know people who grew up with it and um all that you know i'm glad and appreciative that they did that there's bits and pieces even in the other movies that have been put out i wish they would have handled better i wish may wasn't a thing um but on the whole i'm glad these movies exist and i hope that they finish well (laughs) kind of wonder how like fandom feels about the movies who the fandom digimon fandom um i i that i would be interested to know and if you know um these digimon reviews are usually our higher rated videos um so if you are a fan of digimon and listening to this please tell us what you think of these the the series so far because um like maybe there's some stuff we're not getting that you know would make our enjoyment of this better um or if you don't like it tell us why because um you know we're curious Um, yeah and again i do want this to end on a good note but they've already put the poster out for this for the last movie and it doesn't make me feel hopeful (laughs) what's the what's the digimon on the last poster it well the last poster has may at the bottom by herself and at the top of the poster is everybody else reaching out for her. And I'm like, oh, God, they're going to make the last movie about her again, aren't they? <laughs> it's just a symbol for the fact she's going to kill them all. Uh, probably. <laughs> and honestly, my, my hope for the next movie, please tell me what happened to the second season uh, Digi Destin. Because, like, they were shadows in the first movie and there's been no mention of them. I've been wondering that too. Like I've I've been expecting them to appear all through this series, and they haven't. So I guess they're just dead. I I'm I'm convinced they're held somewhere. Um, because I because uh, Yggdrasil or whoever. I honestly don't understand what how this works. Like with the the evil Jedi and the Digimon Emperor showing up. I I guess they're just forms that he's taking. Uh, to fuck with them. Um. I'm assuming he has them held somewhere. Um, but that reminds me one last thing I want to say that I, a plot problem I have with this in season two, they established that there are other Digi Destin around the world with their own partner Digimon. Why have they not called any of these people to help with this global catastrophe? <laughs> I was thinking that too. Cause they had that whole part, that whole arc in the second season where they went around the world hooking up with everybody and like making sure they got a global network going and there's been no mention that there's anybody else in the world that has Digimon to help (laughs) so who knows maybe in the the next movie they'll bring that up and be like all right we're all gonna unite together and have a fucking war or something Mm, Um, I yeah I have one more thing I wanted to mention sure that FBI lady who got into the Digimon world she didn't appear very often but she's lost her fucking mind oh yeah okay yeah that was another thing i wanted to bring up um they they have this flashback again where uh the fbi lady and the teacher lady who uh were i guess digi destined when they were kids um and they went to digital world and they had their own partners and you get a little bit of a flashback like it's a two second flashback just to show that they did um Mm -hmm. yeah so the fbi lady well she's not an fbi but whatever um the government lady is wandering around the digital world with a gun (laughs) No wonder the Digimon world is hostile to people right now. Right? She's just wandering around the dark ocean. There's these weird phantom creatures and she's pointing a gun at them because she's gone crazy. And it's like, what? Then they That's like in one scene. And like the last movie made it seem like that'd be a bigger deal because they went to the digital world to re- after they reset it and she went with them secretly because she wants, she's gone crazy and wants her partner back who I 
I'm pretty sure is like super dead. Um, I think he just ran away because he appeared in one of the um, movies and then he ran off. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's going on with that. <laughs> they kind of gloss over it a lot of the time. It's just going to end. We're going to have the happy ending and then we're just going to cut to her and she's just in the dark ocean saying nonsense and then it just ends. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I could see that happening. But I, um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like they were trying to do some sort of story and maybe um, the old Digi Destin, the teacher guy and the lady, will have their moment in the spotlight. But it seems mm. more they're just going to be shoved to the side. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling. And especially because they probably only have maybe four or five. I'm probably going to guess five. Because um, I think one movie was a little, was one episode longer. Um, but assuming they have four to five episodes left... And to wrap up everything they've been doing so far, I kind of wonder if they're going to have enough time to wrap up their stories and give that a conclusion. Yeah. Um, who knows? Um, so the, I think the next movie I saw is not coming out till next summer. So we've got a while on that. So that's what makes me hopeful that maybe they're going to put a little extra time into it. Um, but yeah, so let us know in the comments what you thought of this movie um i know we'd be super curious to know what uh digimon fans out there how they're feeling about this whether you liked it or you don't like it uh we just want to know why <laughs> what's going on <laughs> like am i seriously just missing something and this is secretly right, right. yeah <laughs> i feel like there's just something going over my head and there's some greatness to this that i just am not capable of understanding yeah maybe maybe like when the the last one's about to come out we'll have to binge watch it again and maybe watching it all together like that without all the gaps in between maybe it'll make sense yeah yeah uh but Jeanette, is there anything else you wanted to tell the people before we sign off here nope all right well thank you again for helping me out with this you've been a big help as always glad to help yeah um, and like I said, guys, just leave us in the comments and let us know what you thought. Um, but I think that does it for us this week. Um, until next week, you'll, we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Ink and Paint Club podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can catch a new episode every week. Also be sure to follow us on our Facebook and Twitter so you can keep up with the show. Links are in the description. We'll see you next week.